Hi everyone, Soul Super 17 here. Let me get through this like usual. I did not own the pictures. I made the thumbnail and non paid video. Alright, so here's the thing. Before anyone said anything about um about basically you're making another what if. Why? I think I did say in the last video about it about it. I had like two video ideas that I was gonna make and then after that it's no more for basically a while. It was in the it was in the video or in my in my community tab about what what's gonna happen. Basically, if you don't know, I'm basically I'm going to basically go back all the way from the to the beginning videos, the ones that have been neglecting, haven't made, and work on them, and I'm going to do so. But I'm also going to be since a series that everyone keeps asking me to make go more into it is solo leveling so solo leveling Deku is coming back and that's only gonna be on Saturday and Sundays so I have time to read probably two chapters and then well yeah two chapters or three depending on how much base I can get and then we will go from there alright Okay, so, until I get to the part where Overhaul Arc ends, and then, like, into the next season of that, for, like, basically the Bond, Deku, and then the Asta Dragon Slayer, it's just gonna be right after the Elf Arc, where he has to go to the Heart Kingdom. When that when I get to that part, that's the end of that series, until I get to the manga. All right, with or or basically watch some of the anime, probably manga most likely. I'll be I'll be trying to find and read. But, and then I'll just go to the next series, which technically would have been the Naruto Grim Reaper. And let me just tell you this, Shippuden. I'm not making no more Naruto what ifs after this one. If it, well, I'm not making no Naruto what ifs if it involves just Naruto's universe instead of this crossover. So please understand that if you guys want your Putin so badly, I have to basically try to you know find a list of episodes that are non filler, and then I have to write it all down, watch them like two or three of them and then make this episode a little part so yeah all right um this is enough of me basically explain stuff just know this i'm also just gonna tell you trigon is gonna be a key feature in this because i'm kind of taking <clears throat> Um, I'm just taking something from another series, basically Teen Titans Go, which I did not own the name of or the series or anything. Um, the people who made it and the people who basically are in charge of Teen Titans owns it. So, I basically am taking though Trigon's personality in that one, just for this... Give me a minute. Alright, so, basically like I was saying, I'm only taking Trigon's personality for the briefest of moments... But he, his, his intention is to cause havoc in Naruto's universe for people. And you'll see. Now, what's going to happen then, you'll see later. But just know this, Trigon is not not going to be good. He's still going to be the same, still be the conqueror. If you guys don't know what Teen Titans is and only knows Teen Titans Go!, um, I recommend trying to look it up. It's a good series. I think many people will like it. And this is kind of some part of my childhood. So, yeah. And enough of me talking. Let's just get into this. So, this is where Naruto became Red X. Oh, by the way, this is how Naruto's suit's gonna be. You'll find out. Okay. <clears throat> now. Where we start off is basically in a another dimension. 
not Naruto's nor T Titans. This is basically a dimension where multiple buildings are destroyed, fire, stone pe like stones statues if you want to call them, of humanoid people. It looks like are frozen in time. Basically, it looks like the everything was covered in basically dust and the sky is red and the waters well the water isn't you know is also red basically everything looks like it's just dead so as we have this creature this being sitting on a throne with horns and white hair and four eyes basically um, and he's also red basically though if you guys don't know who Trigon is just look him up um, T Titans enemies. But anyways, back to it. As he is just scanning through worlds that he wants to conquer, the top of his list is Earth, where his daughter Raven is. He just sighs. He'd be like, so many worlds. So, well, little time I have trying to build my forces for the conquer of Earth. <laughs> soon soon I'll be able to go through the portal and destroy earth well destroy the inhabitants way of living and conquer it for my own as he's basically looking through different cracks in basically the dimension he's in as then he sees something Something peculiar, something strange that catches his interest, but yeah, catches his interest, as he basically sees a boy running from a mob, a boy with whisker blue, you know, sky blue eyes, and gold, basically not golden, but blonde hair. As well, Trigon sees this, this is weird to him. He does not understand this. He does not see the reason behind their anger because they he keeps on hearing them calling him a demon brat you know basically telling him to stop running as well trigon peers into more of it like you know squinting his eyes basically like he's focusing as he sees what's inside the boy and then he starts laughing basically he laughs because he has seen this world before it has been only one of the worlds that he was, well, wanted to conquer at a later date. He says, <laughs> So the Nine Tails got himself sealed. What has it been? Fifty? No. Two hundred years since I last looked into this dimension? Well, unfortunately for the boy. He's going to look like he's going to be killed. Hmm. I was close friends with the Nine Tails. <laughs> uh, we had quite a bit of fun fighting. But. He looks like he's only a half his power. That is so. Hilarious. <laughs> Uh, okay, by the way, if you guys are wondering, I just think Trigon would be like this, so... Eh, you guys don't like it, okay? But yeah, anyways. So, as Trigon is watching this, he, uh, he basically opens up the portal to where he sees his daughter and her friends. Well, basically, quote-unquote, that's what he, they, you know, she calls them. And basically, she's, he's basically seeing a guy in a weird suit... With a skull mask that has well, an X on it. And, well, even on the suit, basically. As, well, he smashes something that was in his hand as it basically shines a red light. And jumps off of the edge into, well, basically, into the water, per se. So, while this person in this costume, Trigon, is thinking, 
he he senses something from this person. He's well grinning at this. And so simple the most simple thing happens. Trigon uses well his magic and opens a portal right in front of this person in the red X suit. And he, this guy says, wait, what the? What is it? As you know, he falls into it. Essentially making him disappear and never to be seen. So, while Red X is, fl- you know, falling through the portal, see, and the, well, it just stops. Red X is in, like, you know, lands on the ground, basically on his knees. He's like, okay, that was weird. And where the, what the? Well, I know I ain't in Jump City no more. And this place looks like it's seen better days. Legit. As, well, he then hears a voice and goes, <laughs> Yes, and it's been quite tiresome being here for so long. And, well, when Red X looks, he sees, well, Trigon, sitting on the throne. He goes like, What the? You know, as he backs away, he goes like, Who are you? He goes, Who am I does not match her mortal. I... I want you to help someone. Which he goes like, What? Help someone? He goes, Yes. You see, there's a boy that needs help, and from what I can see from you, you are very likely to train the boy well. He was like, wait, what do you mean? He goes, well, I have a plan already in motion that I came up with as soon as I saw you. And, well, you traveling through the portal only took about maybe two minutes and I already have an idea. You see, my daughter hates me, despises me. So, in a sense, I can, how do you mortals say, understand, I, in some way or form. <sighs> so, I decided that maybe, maybe someone like her situation, she could have an actual true friend. Well, someone that at least can understand what she goes through. From her past. And, well, Red X was like, huh? So he just basically shows, basically, Naruto running and hearing the people calling him Demon Brat. And, well, this kind of shocks Red X. He goes, what the? Why are they? And then he basically tries to say, <laughs> in this world, dimension, another place. They call him a demon brat because of what he holds inside. As when he shows the QB, basically tearing through Konoha as Jason and... Well, uh, okay, sorry. The thing is, uh, I kind of believe the theory is Jason Todd is Red X, but... Um, I'm not going to say who it is yet, but most likely that's what I'm going to say later on. I just made a slip. <laughs> Anyways, Red X, you know, is shocked by this. And he was like, what is this place you're sending me to anyways? And why should I even help you? He was like, well, human. If you don't, well, I'll send you back, but you'll be in severe pain. Which just kind of, you know, sends a chill down. Red X spine, and so what happens is, because also I know about your past. In what happened to you, a little bit of time, like I said, when you were coming through the portal, which, Jason, ah, oh God, I am really messing up. You know what? Might as well just make it, Jason. <laughs> uh. Since I, since I never, you know, alright, come up a new thing. Yeah, I already came up with it. Anyways, so, 
as right extra, you know, doesn't say nothing. And then he just sighs, be like, all right, all right, I'll do what you want. What do I get in return? Which, I'm trying to go and just smiles as this demon sends up, you know, freaks out Red X even more. So, he was simple. Anything, well, almost anything you want. But, that's for after your job is done. Now, let me grant you this. As all of a sudden, Red Energy goes around, well, Red X. As somehow, in some way, he gains all the knowledge of Naruto's world, and the language, and what's going on, and such. Basically, just enough for him to survive off. So, after that, a portal underneath, well, right behind Red X appears, and he goes, now off. You'll, as soon as you exit the portal, you have a bag, I mean, you'll have a bag on your back that will have your suit. And such, I'll be in commu I'll be in touch with you every so often. Do not fail me, Red X. In which he goes, yeah, yeah. So, he basically goes through the portal. And so, when he exits out, he sees himself in normal civilian clothing, as then he hears someone saying, Please, stop! Stop! I, I, I don't know what's, what I did! You know, as then he basically rushes over. So, when he gets there, he sees two civilians, basically, hidden Naruto. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, it's the villager, so, you know... As they're outside the village, so... <laughs> yeah, and Ambu are taking a little bit of time to get there. So, what happens is... He basically is mad and basically goes over to these guys, punches one... You know, and then quickly elbows the other guy in the face. When when the guy that he punched was like, What the? Who? He basically immediately gets stomped on the head. And, well... Then... Gets kneed in the head. I mean, the other guy gets kneed in the head by this guy. So, Naruto was beaten to almost unconsciousness. He was, what? Uh, and he passes out. So, Red X in normal civilian clone size, like, this kid's gonna be trouble, I know it. He basically picks him up and decides, you know, to basically walk over to. Any place that's not there. Now, Donbu do arrive. They do see Naruto being carried by somebody. Some Donbu are following, you know, this man with holding that's holding Naruto. Well, not man. I think, yeah, and holding Naruto basically as he. Well, as they basically see the people that are knocked out. So what happens is he basically finds a cave that's near a stream. And, well, basically sets Naruto down and basically starts to make a little fire since it was almost night. He catches some fish, and as soon as Naruto basically wakes up, he smells the fish. And he goes, ah, uh, what happened? Wait, where are... Wait, is that fish? As he hears the guy, this, well, basically Red X saying, well, glad you're awake, kid. In which he goes, huh? huh? When he looks, he sees, well, basically Red X, not in no suit. He goes, uh, who are you? He goes like, I'm a, I'm a traveler passing by. But <laughs> that's all for now. I can tell you. He goes like, uh, um, why did you? Oh, wait, are you going to hurt me? He goes, why? Uh, but, uh, um. <laughs> That's what almost happened to me. It was... I mean, he basically just waves his hand. He's like, can it just eat something already? But he goes, but I, I don't have no money. He's like, ah, kid, I don't care about your money. You're basically probably starving, so eat something. And in which he goes, uh, sure. So Naruto goes over to the fish and, you know, starts eating it. Which, while Naruto is eating, he's looking at the, you know, man who basically just eating the fish. He was like, um, sir... What's your name? He goes, Name's Jason. Jason Todd. It's nice to meet you. 
before you guys ain't say anything, there will be a backstory that's going to be probably when Naruto is 10 years old. And by the way, I am not making him be a Genin. He's basically going to... How should I say this? Basically, he's they're going to be around 15 years old, so Shippuden is happening when they're way older in this one. So yeah, I just wanted to change that up a little bit. Because I kind of want to even have Naruto be around the same age as the Titans. Now, anyways, back to this. As he goes, weird name. He goes, <laughs> what's yours? It's Naruto. Naruto is a Maki. He goes, that's a weird name. Well, alright. Well then, Naruto. It's a pleasure to meet you. Now, as they say, Jason, you know, eating the figures, like, tell me what happened. So, let's just say Naruto did a Nothing really, they just started chasing him. As then Jason decides to think, just by him walking down the street, they get pissed off? Tch, this village is really scum. I should know. So, which, Norris was like, um, what's gonna happen? He goes, well, I'm a traveler, so I think I'm gonna stay in the village for a bit. Who knows? Maybe I'll like it enough and stay. Which Norris goes, uh, oh. Alright then. Which he can see Naruto is sad. And he basically kind of has a feeling someone's watching and he grins. He goes, anyways, we should probably get back to the your village since I know Kona is nearby. Which he was like, uh, are you sure? He goes, yeah, what's the worst going to happen? It's not, it's, I know how to defend myself. He's like, really? He was like, yeah. Right, come on. He's like, okay. Wait, what about the fish? He goes like, eh, there's only two more left. We'll eat on the way there. So basically, Jason puts out the fire as, you know, Naruto and him talk and eat. Jason learns a little bit about Naruto. He can even tell Naruto's having a fake smile on his face. You know, basically when he talks about Konoha. You can already tell the kid does not have no love of it, but he still would, you know, because he you know, wants to get respect. So he kind of, I mean, you know, respect from the villagers, and he was willing to work hard for it. So, Jason already can kind of see some potential in the kid, basically. As so, what happens is simple. Jason and Naruto go into Konoha. And, well, by the next, well, yeah, okay, yeah, goes into Konoha, the Hokage basically finds Naruto with Jason. Basically, Jason talks to the Hokage. By himself, and well, he just says he's a traveler and he may want to stay in Konoha. He's been tired of traveling for so long. And so, Horizon can you know, basically just nod, but he knows something's up. Now, we do have what Jason, like I said, for the next couple of weeks, has been staking out Konoha. Knowing every nook and cranny, anything he can get intel on to try to know what's really basically up with the villagers. He basically finds out that the basically the ninja council, you know, tried to help out Naruto in some way or form, while the civilian council only prays to Uchiha and basically give him anything he wants. And when he meet the Uchiha, well, Basically, he meets the Chiha. Basically, what I mean by this, they basically pray Sasuke early. And basically, the Chihas, they get anything they want, but not many places recognize them, only the civilian council does. So, they're, they're arrogant. The only one who's not arrogant is Itachi and his mom. So, Jason has been, you know, looking at the place. He basically likes it. The villagers weren't, like, you know, terrible people. And, well, let's just say this. After that happens, he starts to think, Hmm, what am I going to train the kid in? <sighs> Probably everything Bruce taught me. I mean, most of this stuff on basic being stuff will work for him. Analyzing stuff basically will help him out in the future. And quick thinking. And, well. Seems like. 
Uh, Bruce will be proud of me in some way or form. I mean, if he knows I'm even alive. Probably thinks I'm dead. Most likely. As we do have a flashback to where the, you know, basically Jason's waking up as a bomb basically blew up. See, Batman found him. You know, dead and well, supposedly dead. And there was a faint trace of life. But they took him to the hospital. Unknown to Bruce, because in his grief, he went back to the Way Manor, and he just sat there, you know, basically in a chair with his mask off, upset and angry with himself. But the hospital, they basically found a trace of life. So, they keep Jason alive. But for some reason, someone who basically said he's Jason's guardian would want to keep anyone who knows about him, you know, under wraps. No one would know that he's alive, basically. And so, the Joker failing and killing Jason. And, well, <laughs> this person who did save his life was, how should I say this? Ray, I, I, I may have butchered his name. Rage. Jal, Rajal Ghul. I think that that's how you say it. Rajal Ghul. You guys can leave it in the comments. I just know how I know who he is. He's basically the leader of the League of Assassins. I'm, but I know like there's a lot of stuff with basically assassins and everything and Batman's. Oh, and so many people tried to kill Batman. And so many leagues or assassin. Ugh. Give me a minute. I was right about his name, and I was right about the League of Assassins. So, anyways, he basically saved Jason's life. For to what reason, you may ask? To train him? Mmm. Sort of. You see, Knight, I'm basically the Robin that was, how should I say this, was not replaced, more like taken in. This is between the time where Robin left and then the new one came in and such. Basically a couple of years. Well, technically a, a year. So around season three. A year or two. So, yeah. So new... That, I mean, new, basically, Robin came in. That was Jason Todd. Basically, the past Robin, who... This is his actual name, Dick Grayson. Is, uh, you know, was the previous one that basically is watching Jump City. Who is the Robin that we know in the Teen Titans TV show. Not Teen Titans Go! Teen Titans that came out in the 2000s. The 2000 and 2010... Between that, you know, that, that time period. But anyways, enough of me rambling on. So, Ray Al Ghul kept Jason alive. He basically trained him, you know, to help him more in his, you know, fighting capabilities, tactical mind, in the sense of surviving on his own. Basically, stealing, basically being a thief. And, the, and Jason does ask, wait... Why are you help me if you don't want me to become a part of the League of Assassins? And he goes, <laughs> Simple, Jason. Simple. <sighs> I do not like what... We both know who, but I will only keep his identity a secret for safety reasons. What Batman does. But him... Saving you as a failure, and yet you somehow survive, which is quite remarkable to me. So, as a courtesy to what I believe in, I decided to help you out. You were innocent, and you were treated badly. Near death's door, and yet survived of explosion. Not many people could do that. 
So, that's just the only reason why I wanted to help you, because I was impressed. And wanted to see what you're capable of. And, to my surprise, you exceeded every expectation I had. Even more. Not enough to, well, want me to have you a part of the lead, that is. You can live your life out, Jason. Our train is done. This is goodbye. Take this bag that's next to me on the table. It has some cash. Go wherever you want. If you ever need more help, contact this number. You'll need it, young man. And good luck. So, basically, Jason heard about the Robin, you know, in Jump City. He went there. He basically got through the security tower because of Rachel Gould, you know, yeah, Rachel Gould's help and because of the training from Batman. He breaks in, steals the Red X suit. And yeah, so. Well, basically, we had that flashback as he it ends. He does say to himself, Rach, you're one crazy guy. <laughs> I thank you anyways. So, after this, Jason finds a place to live. He basically found even a job. And so on throughout the month, he sees Naruto's treatment only, you know, getting a little bit better, only to be one of annoying, you know, everyone ignoring him. So, let's just say this. While Naruto was basically at the ramen shop, you know, basically Jason had a good understanding of his rounds, of Naruto, what he does. So he comes up with sort of ramen shop. He goes, hey, can I have one bowl of ramen, me son? Which Ichiraku says, uh, right away. Which he basically sits down right next to Naruto, and Naruto goes, "Hey, uh, uh, Mr. Jason." I'm, no, actually, wait. He goes, "Wait, Mr. Todd." He goes, <laughs> "Kid, just call me Jason." He goes, uh, "All right. Uh, well then, uh, Jason. How are you doing?" He was like, "Good. I decided to stay here in the village. I like it. So, you happy?" Which Naruto kind of well smiles, but. He has this look in his eyes saying of fear and worry. Which Jason says, I have to help him out with that then. Great. Trauma. Uh, I'm not the perfect guy for that. But anyways. So. Simple. After, you know, obviously each of I mean, Tochi gives Jason his ramen. He starts eating and he goes like, man, this is really good. I think come here every now and then just to eat. Which basically Tochi laughs. He goes, hey, thank you. So, how do you know Naruto? Which he just says, I found him in the woods, passed out. Decided to carry him to a cave, catch him fish, and feed him. Which Tochi basically smiles at that. And he goes back into the kitchen, which Naruto goes, So, what you going to do here? He goes like, well, there's a, I have like a couple of jobs. Or basically, I'm, I'm thinking of trying for. Which goes, huh? Basically, a ninja tool shop or... How should I say? I'm basically stocking shelves. One probably for a, an arts and crafts, even some basically for also for ninja stuff, and well, a blacksmith, some apprentice. Which Naruto eyes one goes like, "That's cool." He goes, "Thanks." It's not really my thing, but we gotta make a living, gotta make a living. Which Naruto nods. So after that, they talk and chat. And so then, while they're still there, not basically, yeah, so, are you gonna try to become a ninja? Which Naruto does nod. He goes, when you start an academy, he goes, soon. I'm actually starting really early. He goes, really? He goes, yeah, I'm starting next week. He goes, well... How about this? I'll pop by your place in two weeks and see how it is. All right. Which Naruto kind of you know shocked by that and then pauses for a few minutes. Which then Naruto nods. He was like, "Okay, I'll meet you then in two weeks. You promise?" Which Jason nods. So after that, he leaves. Two weeks later, 
when he sees Naruto, Naruto is basically frustrated. And, yeah, because the teachers te are teaching, they basically, basically, Nar or Jason asks what's wrong, so Naruto tells him that they already are basically keep him out of class for porn stuff. They um keep on basically ignoring his questions and always ask him when he doesn't know something. Like they ask him harder questions than normal. So that that kind of pisses Jason off a little. So after that he looks into it and yeah, they are purposely, you know, purposely sabotaging Naruto. After he finds that out, he tells Naruto he's going to train him himself. And he's going to have to keep this a secret from people. Which Naruto is asking him why, because... Well, he says, I'm a traveler, yeah, but... Let's just say I, I know a few things that nor... Normal people, like... Nor... Nah, nor... No, no normal people know. A few techniques. Let's just say that much, kid. Which... Basically, Naruto not. So, after that, Naruto's being trained by Jason, and, <laughs> yeah, Naruto did not know what he was getting himself into. So, after a while, Haruzen w does notice, he asks Jason, why is he helping out Naruto so much? Haruzen's good in this one, he just want to make sure why. He just says he doesn't like how the teachers at the school are treating the kid. And plus, most of this village looks at him weirdly. So he takes it upon himself to help out Naruto. If he has a problem with that, then... <laughs> he doesn't care. In which... Haruzen's kind of shocked because... Anyone who knows about Hokage would be... You know, never saying something like that to them. But he's impressed. Some Anbu were ready to attack or disrespecting the Hokage, which Haruzen just chuckles at him. He goes, Oh, you are very different from most people. Where well, Jason just says, I'm not most people. So, there's another thing I want to ask you. He goes, Huh? What is it? He goes, like, The kid's home. No offense. It's like it was attacked multiple times. So, in the next coming years, if. The kid's situation at home doesn't improve. He's taking him in at his place. Which Haruzum's kind of surprised by this. He goes, um, You do know of the r things that the people say, right? He goes, Yeah, I don't care what people say. Never stopped me before. Won't stop me now. So, just want to let you know that Hokage. Which Jason does get up and, you know, he's walking towards the door, which... Haruzen just says, I will have my eye on you, Jason Todd. Know this. If anything happens to Naruto that puts him in danger, as Jason just looks at Vesa Haruzen with a bored look, he goes like, Trust me, the kid's un well, doesn't have much muscle on him. Looks like he's hasn't been getting good nutritional, you know, nutrition in him. So... Already this training will build up his muscle, but he has to eat properly. If there's some stuff that gets stolen... <laughs> it's not my problem. Which Haruzen just eyes wide and he goes like, Are you saying you'll steal food just to... He goes, Yeah, I have a feeling this, these villagers aren't being nice to Naruto in that department. Just a hunch. So after that... He leaves the room. Haruzen is baffled by this. And he decides to have a Ambu to basically stake out Naruto more. Even checking his apartment when he's not around. To make sure that everything's okay. So, we do do a time skip to when Naruto is around 10 years old. Because he was six. I just never said that. Well, five to six years old. He just turned six. So, yeah. Anyways. What happens is simple. Jason has been working. Um, things have gone for Naruto. Has gone a little bit better. But he still took him in anyways. When he was eight. He basically, you know, buys everything for Naruto. People who try to swindle out him money. 
even their stone owners, <laughs> um, they, uh, they, they can't swindle Jason, so they get a lesser priced food than, you know, than what they wanted out of him. He basically trained Naruto and everything he, well, was everything he's being taught at. He doesn't, he can't teach him no ninjutsu, but the things he's basically teaching Naruto how to be stealth without using no chakra or jutsus. You know, it comes in handy, also being silent, reading people's emotions and, you know, body language, which Naruto did not understand at first, but after a while, yeah. And so, we just have Jason, you know, basically has been working on the Red X suit, just sighing. He was, well, <laughs> looks like I'm figuring out where how to convert Chakra into the suit if needed. But the idea is very complex. Besides, I don't even have... It, this is all technology. It won't work properly with it. Wait a minute, guys. Okay, as I was saying, Jason's basically saying he doesn't know how he can, you know, have the suit as or chakra. Because he knows he can, you know... He uh, he knows because he can... I mean, he can't do chakra, yeah. He's not from that dimension, but still. He knows he may die one day. These villagers have tried multiple times on getting rid of him. And he has always taken down the villagers. So, even some ninjas, which surprised most people. Because he doesn't use no chakra. So, in a sense, he's planning to make the suit look like what's in the thumbnail for Naruto. And so, right when he says that, Basically, portal, you know, shown as he hears someone's voice. He goes, "How is the boy's training doing?" By the way, it's at night, so, and he, he's in a room with no windows. Which Jason just like sighs and really goes like, "Okay, now that surprised me. There's no warning, and I hate magic now." Which a trigon just staring at him impassively. He goes, "All right, the boy's training's good. He lives with me now, so." I'm able to train him a lot more and to watch his eating habits. I got him to be less of a ramen addicting kid. But we do eat ramen a lot, you know, sometimes. Which, to be fair, is good. Also, I've been training the kid how to read people's emotions and body language. Even how to intimidate people into a fight to make them lose focus. And he kind of picked up my habit of, well, witty banter. And being cocky exactly at the same time. And making fun of people. Which he does. Which Trigon sighs. He goes. Anything else. He goes. Hand to hand combat. Is well. Decent. These villagers are being a pain. I've been. Near. I've been. Well. I've been almost assassinated a couple of times. Not because out of lax. And let my guard down. But more of a. Just want to see what they'll do. These jutsus are being a pain in the butt. You know, so. And plus, the kid's really good at sneaking. Not good enough to be on my level, though, but good enough to swipe a couple of things and even have a sleight of hand. Basically, we're going to work on his lockpicking skills and sneaking around when he gets a little bit more older and way more, you know, agile. Which Trigon does say, good. Now. What were you working on? He goes, well, I may die one day, so I'm trying to make this as a present for Naruto when he's older to fit in it. 14, 15. I'm trying to basically convert to where Chakra will be more suited into it and try to make some, well, he just shows Trigon the, well, tr well basically the drawing of what he wants the suit to look like. Even adding some, like, basically, some features that will work for Naruto, like some kunais and sh shurikens, ropes, you know, ninja wire, basically, I mean, and, well, basically exploding tags if needed, and so on and so forth. Anything ninja would need, which 
Trigon's pretty impressed, which he just smiles and s snaps a finger. As all of a sudden the suit glows as everything, you know, Jason wanted is on there. Well, basically, you know, already given to the suit. And then he basically just says, Payment for teaching the boy so well. And also, as all of a sudden he just points his left, I mean his right hand forward. Well, basically finger forward. As all of a sudden books appear on the table where Jason, you know, was working on. He was like, these are for the boy. And for you to read. Some, well, some stuff about ninja. And technology from your dimension. For him to learn, just in case. Which, tri which I mean, Trigon says with a smile. And so, Jason just nods. He goes, you're right, I probably should teach him about my world. Just in case something happens. So, basically, while, you know, this happens, the Titans dimension, you know, time is going way different there. Raven sends magical energy there, and she's trying to pinpoint the source of it. And it has been taking about maybe a couple days. Which, for Jason, it's been like two to three years. Well, it's only more than that. Since he was six, so... It's, he's ten. Yeah. So basically, four years. So yeah. But anyways, she basically is looking for it, and she suddenly comes to the realization... It comes from where her father is. In which she kind of had a mental link to him. As Trigon, well, already kind of ended the call with Jason. About even telling him to train him more. And find him with different weapons. And even trying to help him with the Nine Tails. And just tell the boy to say Trigon. He'll understand. Or... Well, actually, he says this. He says, tell the fox. I mean, tell the boy to tell the fox. Trigon sends his regards. Which, Jason nods. So, basically, what happened after that? We do have then Raven again. Basically being, like, shown where Trigon is. And, uh, you're just sitting down on the throne, smiling at her. As then she opens her eyes and, you know, she was, you know, sweating. Just, no. What did he do? Did he help Red X? It looks like I'm going to have to find him. Somehow. So she basically starts going through magical book, Well, magic books. Books basically aren't anything she, you know, can find to bring Red X back to wherever he is. So we do then skip more. Basically, Jason tells Naruto basically where he comes from. Kind of explains about oh, explains about technology, even showing him the suit, not you know, not basically like the suit suit, just the mask, and basically he sees like all these different. I should say this. He basically sees like wires, like the mask on the front. You can't see the wires, but in the back you can. Which that kind of shocks Naruto because it's like a see through thing. A little. He goes, he sees basically mother I mean, basically mother chips, motherboards, basically just what you would see kind of in a computer. Just circuit boards, basically, all that stuff. Which Norris doesn't understand, but after Jason tells him, explains it, even giving him books on it and helping him, even helping in his ninja studies and training and such and everything else, let's just say this. By the time Naruto learns this in two years, yeah, he's pretty smart. Even helping Naruto get into the actual library, helping him in his henjutsu early when during the when he was ten. So basically, he has the henjutsu down. Basically, he even made the sexy jutsu. Um, he basically even helped him with chakra control, which it was very detailed and everything else. And he basically even finds out if he. Had, about the notes Trigon put in saying the boy has too much chakra, so yeah, they um he basically is way more advanced than most people in his class. So by the time we have Naruto being like fourteen years old, fourteen to fifteen, Naruto basically 
he has learned everything from Jason. Jason has taught him anything he could. He basically has helped Naruto in any way he can. Naruto has understands technology. Basically, will be able to blend into the modern day, as Jason says. And so on and so forth. It's just amazing to Jason how much knowledge was basically given to the kid. Even Trigon, which is a little, like, you know, extra books given. Which, he says for a conqueror, you are pretty helpful. And he goes, like, this is for entertainment. It's kind of funny. Really. So, yeah. So, we have Jason, who, well, is a little bit older now. Um, hold up. Okay, as I'm saying, Jason is a little bit older now. And I'm not going to say how old because eh, you guys do the math. I don't know what Red X age is. So, yeah. But anyways, let's just continue on. Jason is well, waiting for Norto. He gave him a mission to do. To sneak into the Hokage's office to copy a jutsu from the scroll ceiling. And so he's just waiting for Naruto. As, well, when Ar he does hear something open as the sign, like, you know, open and close three times. And then he basically sees someone coming through the window. As, well, when the person takes off the mask, well, not the mask, but, yeah, technically a, a mask that was basically painted black. You know, covering his face and taking off the uh, material that was covering his hair. He just sees, like, you know, grin and, like, whisker marks. And we basically the blonde hair and the blue eyes. He goes, so, did you? He goes, like, yep. Yeah. multi shao Kun Jutsu. I got it. He goes, good. Left any trace? He goes, nope. I mean, someone found out that the whole entire door was opened. I mean, well, technically, I didn't. Leave, I didn't really leave it open. It's more like they just wiggled the knob, and they basically knew it was opened. Which Jason is like, really? He was like, eh. They know the door had a knob. Genjutsu's, which he does not. He was like, I hate those things. The same. So, I mean, I was able to get in and get out. Nothing was stolen. Just copies. <laughs> So, Jason, is that everything? He goes, yep, tell you everything I could, Naruto. You're ready for tomorrow's, well, you're ready for the test in three days. Which Naruto's like, yes! Do you think I'm going to pass me come again in? He goes, yep. Anyways, get some rest. You ain't going to be leaving this place anytime soon. And so, Naruto nods. We do then have Jason smiling. He goes, uh, The kid really rubbed off on me. Oh well. <laughs> Gotta get to work tomorrow in the forge. So, after that, we do have then, then, well, two days later. You see, two days pass. Jason went to the forge where he works. And, well, he's working on a present for Naruto to pass. Now... Something very simple happens. You see, his boss allows Jason to do this with the boss's helping. This, well, basically, present is a weapon, basically a, a ninjado. You know, basically, that Naruto is going to be given to help him out in his ninja career. Basically, the sword is being, becoming near indestructible. But not as near indestructible as chakra metal. It will take a lot of different, basically, things, I mean, different ways to break this sword. You see, Jason had learned about sealing. And, well, when Naruto seen Jason read a book on sealing, was very, how should I say this? interesting to him, so he did start that up, his boss, basically, Jason's boss told him about sealing, 
he got interested and wanted to read it. Naruto then starts to doing it, and well, so on and so forth. Naruto became a natural at it, and um, let's just say this happens. He basically knows how to do some seals, and uh, yeah, Haruzen kind of got worried. Told Jason to stop it, you know, don't let Naruto, you know, learn any sealing, which he just asked why. And he was like, I I just don't want Naruto to be, he was, what, caught? What, what, oh, sorry, my throat. <clears> he <throat> was, was, what, Naruto to be caught? He was, huh? He was, yeah, I mean, it's been all, I've been in this village a while, and the fourth Okage looks similar to Naruto, doesn't he? Which, Haru was like, I, I don't know you, because like, he's a carbon copy of him. Come on. Which, Anbu basically were, immediately were sent off to leave and basically privacy seal. And so Haruzen told him the story. He then tells, he made a mistake on not giving Naruto at least some inheritance. Some basically stuff that could have helped Naruto. This was when Naruto was around 12, so... Haruzen doesn't see what Jason means and he basically explains it. And let's just say he digs into Haruzen's basically choices very, very harshly to the point where he demands Haruzen to basically get let Naruto, you know, have one of his father's techniques. In which Haruzen agreed. That's how basically harsh he basically lectured Haruzen himself. So yeah, so basically he has the the flying thunder god and he has worked on it. To the point where it, you know he has he just needs the kunai. Um, he's still working on the putting on places, but that's it. So he does have the flying thunder god, and he does know about his well some stuff on his parents. Which, when Naruto did find out, he kind of was pissed off at Haruzen. But then he was told about the Nine Tails when he was twelve. Um, basically, this was done at the same time. And so on and so forth. Jason told him about saying hi. I like, told the you know what I said about Trigon telling him. So Naruto, when he was thirteen, you know, went to talk to the fox. So the fox snort, you know, basically does not like Naruto. He asked you know, the fox to be friends with him, which which basically then the fox basically scoffs at him, and then he goes, "Oh yeah, um, someone named Trigon to say hello." In which. Basically, Kurama stops and eyes widen, and then grins. And so, let's just say, after that little thing happened, the, the Nine Tails and Naruto became fast friends. And Kurama actually becomes like an overprotected father for Naruto. <laughs> Jason's the older brother along with Haruka. So, yeah. Kurama father. <laughs> yeah, Kurama's. Kurama's technically like a father to Naruto. So, and he does think Naruto has his own kid, which that technically makes the, well, basically, Trigon laugh when he actually thinks about it. So, anyways. So we do have Naruto basically taking the test. He passes it. Um, he basically beats Mizuki easily. Even when he's going all out. Uh, but but if you're wondering why did Mizuki not, like, you know... Be, you know, basically trade the village earlier? Because he didn't, you know, see over tomorrow to later. And the attack never happened because of, well... Things of Naruto happened later. So, what happens is simple. After basically Naruto passes, you know... Mizuki is pissed. And he... He does have no one else to that failed, so he can't have no one steal it. So he has to do it himself. Now, what is it simple? When Naruto is going home, he, you know, after talking to Shikamaru and Shoji, he when he gets home, he basically knows something was wrong because there was blood in the doorknob. And then he opens it quickly, he sees blood dripping on the ground, and, well, he does run to the living room, and he sees Jason all bloodied and bruised. Basically, he sees multiple shurikens, and, well, 
basically two shurikens, three kunais in his one arm, and one of his basically a shuriken in his leg. It looks like he has like some burn marks on his hands. And he just looks like in really bad shape. As Jason goes, <laughs> Hey kiddo, what's up? Well she goes, Jason! So he you know goes over, he's like, I, I we need to take you to a hospital. He's like, nah, eh, <laughs> I ain't gonna make it. Listen, I was gonna save this for your well, birthday when you're 14 to 15. Since your birthday passed, I was busy that day. And the Zan was in two days. Well, basically, three days later, so. Late birthday present. You know that room I tell you never to go into? It was, uh, yeah. There's something in the box. I want you to take it and <coughs> run. Run as far as way you can from here. Which, basically, he's... Norge was looking at Jason and shot. He goes, why? Why, Jason? He goes, these villagers. They're going to try and kill you. Believe me. I don't want you to stay in this village no more, Naruto. I think he puts a... He basically uses his right hand to put on Naruto's left shoulder. He goes like... I want you to get out of here as soon as possible. Got it? As soon as you get on to my present. And then... <coughs> and another box next to it. Get out of here. Take whatever you need. Seal everything up in the seal and scrolls and get out. Money, cash, books, whatever. Promise me. Which he does nod. And he goes like, what are you going to do? He goes, <laughs> stall. He goes, huh? So basically, he gets up, which surprises Naruto because he is badly, like he can't move. This is just pure willpower. So he's walking to the door to go outside, which he goes, Jason, you're going to die. He goes like, I'm a dead man walking, Naruto. Now get going. And he just smiles, and so. What happens is simple. The ninjas who he basically faced him, yeah, they were badly beaten, but not dead. Now, Jason, when he basically goes out the door and locks it, I mean, not, well, locks it from the inside and basically closes the door, he, uh, he basically takes like two steps forward, and basically about maybe... Six ninjas are there. Like three, maybe four Hugas. Maybe a, um. Not. I was gonna basically do a. Uh, basically, the Shikamaru clan and. Namanakas? No, 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 not, not that one, no. Oh my god. I knew their names, I can't think of them right now. Yeah, I can't really, I can't really remember about Shikamaru's clan and the Inazukas, but I, I, I came to realize no, it was just maybe a couple of Hugas, two to three, um, from the Branch family, and just some random Chunin and Jonin that were given money by the council to try to, you know, try to kill basically Jason and kill Naruto. So one, one of the random people just saying, so, <laughs> where's the demon? As Jason uses his right hand to take out Kunai, he goes, Does, well, It doesn't matter if he's here or somewhere else. You won't find him. As, you know, he basically you know, basically has the Kunai become, you know, reverse. As one of the Hugos just says, It's pointless. You're going to die soon. Why do you keep fight? You know, fighting. Well, Jason just smiles and goes, I'm a stubborn guy. And death doesn't take me so easily. So, as Jason just runs forward... Surprisingly enough, you know, he keeps on the same speed as he fought them in, which he's wounded badly, and he's moving at the top speed, which one of us shot in, that cost him their life. So Jason kills that dude, and then the other one tries to throw a kunai at him. He dodges it, and then basically throws his kunai at the other guy, t catching the other kunai, and immediately... Jumps up in there, kicks one of them. Wait, well, actually, jump over the person he killed, kicks the other guy in the head. The Hugo had the Byaku gun activated. He sees no chakra points, as they know, so they deactivate and then try to go for the pressure points. In which Jason 
basically skillfully nod, catches one of them breaking their basically arm, and then immediately starts to, well, beat the living crud out of them. In which, meanwhile, Naruto is out. No, in the bit in the house, runs all the way into the back room that Jason goes into. Says that's his workshop, and so when he sees this two boxes. He goes over to one that looks like there's something in it. I'm not like a lo- the long one. So basically, the square one. I mean, yeah, square rectangle one. When basically he opens up that one, he sees, but he and the red X basically mask with a note. Basically, the gist is this: for the note, he says, "Naruto, this is one of your birthday presents. I was working on this for you. This is the red X suit." It has technology in it, where I come from. But let's just say, I found a way how to convert this to have <laughs> chakra to be work with it, instead of Xenophium as its power source. You're welcome. I even worked on the utility belt for it. So, I hope you uh, enjoy it. Make me proud, Naruto. Because now, you're the one who's going to be the next Red X. You can, you, and this is very durable. Trust me. <laughs> I can't wait to see how far you grow. And then basically Naruto, you know, has some tears in his eyes. So basically he then goes to open up the long, basically, box. He sees the, you know, Ninjado. With another card, basically says, here's the second present. A sword that me and my boss been working on. There's some seals on it to make it lighter, stronger, way more durable. But, you're going to have to keep it in shape. Trust me. Alright? This is to help you on your, well, your basically career as a ninja. Hopefully this and the red X suit will help a lot. Anyways. I hope you like it, Naruto. As basically Naruto closed the letter. He basically immediately, you know, puts on the red X suit. He does, like, have the Kona headband. He, you know, he basically is going to throw that when he basically leaves the house. And so, he runs over to his room. He basically grabs a ceiling scroll, puts everything he has into it. Books on ceiling, basically fighting style, um, some basically jutsu, I mean, some basically chakra nature, I mean, yeah, chakra control and nature elements that he was going to work on when he becomes a Genin. Basically, anything that would help him, kunai, shurikens, it's just, they're all going to, like, these, this one, like, basically one to two scroll. And so, surprisingly enough, Naruto basically, you know, just getting everything he can that's in his room. Um, basically, even goes downstairs, um, because Jason, you know, tells him to leave a couple of stuff hidden around. So basically he grabs his, basically, he did get the three prong kunai on a discount from Jason's boss. So, he does get those, and basically the Horatian kunais, he gets those that he had scattered around, puts them in the scroll, and... To be honest, he Naruto's kind of surprised because he sees like two holsters for scrolls, and you know, in his leg, right leg. So after he gets everything he needs, give him some like water bottles and basically food, basically like um instant ramen and maybe some like fruit bars or something. He he puts them, you know, in that um holder as he sees them through the front window. Jason fighting off the guys. Which, Naruto's surprised because Jason is literally on death's door. And he already is only down to one guy as he sees Naruto finally, you know, killing the guy. And with a smile, basically, the guy falls with Jason just dropping the kunai and looking at the, well, to the side where he sees Naruto in the red X suit and smiles. And then falls over. So Naruto basically, you know, is... Crying, crying because he doesn't the mask on. He runs over to Jason's room. He's he basically gets a scroll from Jason's room, 
for quicker use for Naruto and gets everything he can. When Naruto finds out he has some scrolls that Naruto did not know, including on something called the Shidori, which is it was from Kakashi, which surprises him. But anyways, just want to say that. So after he grabs that and everything else Jason has, Naruto basically goes out the back and leaves after throwing the Kona headband. Which, after he, you know, he basically puts on the black material over his head and the mask, someone was sitting, coming through the commotion, sees him, just jumps away and, you know, just taken off. Which, that kind of surprises them, but when they basically get in the front of Jason's house, it's, um, like, basically they're surprised to see Jason with basically six people dead. So, Abu come, Haruzen comes, basically Haruzen says, Kakashi, what happened here? He goes, I, I don't know, I just got here. So, that's the thing. They, he basically explains what happens, even about Naruto suddenly leaving, Haruzen is in a panic, he says how many, he goes like, just like, probably like two minutes ago, but he looks like he's moving at top speed. So Haruzen put in the place on lockdown as quickly as he can, but fails. When he he goes to the Sensen people, like the Sensen area of the village, they say he's not in, he puts out a, basically, retrieval track team. And there's Sakura Harno, Sasuke, and, you know, Kiba. Hanata is on the team, too. And Neji. So. When basically Naruto's running. He basically feels some. Like you know. His body somehow. Becoming like a little bit faster than normal. Then he says. That place. I hate it. I hate it so much. Which. He then hears Kurama saying. I know kid. Don't worry. I have a feeling we're not going to stay. Near in the fire country for long. He goes. How do you know? He goes, <laughs> trust me. And Naruto, how many times did I have to told you to, well, say my name? I already told you it. I already got my respect. He's like, yeah, I know, but still, I didn't try to get your chakra yet. He goes, <laughs> look, we're already technically bonded. It became friends real quick. Which Naruto goes like, more like a father, but yeah. Which, you know, I'm just going to just size, but he's thinking in his head. Thanks, kid. First time everyone said that to me. So, he goes, trust me. We're going to be almost captured, or should I say, going to be almost captured, but then disappear. Which, Nord goes, like, how are you so sure, Kurama? Like I said, they became friends real quick, and yeah, Kurama did tell them his name by accident. Which, then he just sighs. And, like, I can't believe it. I just told you my name. And ever since then, you know, he calls him... He doesn't call him Kurama. Because I don't see Naruto basically, you know, saying Kurama without, you know... Kurama actually wanting him to know. So, he just tells the kid every t I mean, he just tells Naruto every time to say it. You know, when he feels like to. But anyways. So, let's just say this. Naruto runs very far. He does take about maybe a couple minutes breaks and then runs. Because he knows how fast the ninjas are going to be. So, what happens is simple. When Naruto basically is in a clearing, we do have the Teen Titans. Raven is, you know, has basically an area set up where... Robin, Starfire, Cyborg, and Beast Boy are all ready. Which Raven asks... You sure you want me to do this? Which Robin says, Yeah, we need to red actually get here soon well, back here as soon as possible. It's been about maybe four what, give me a minute. It's been eight days. He has not been, you know, brought to justice yet. Which Raven does not. So she basically walks away from them, goes in the area where she has set up, and well when she closes her eyes to focus her energy she just says, okay, I can't believe I'm actually going to do this. And so, she basically goes into her, you know, going to use her demonic, you know, and power, basically, her demonic side, to 
that basically gives her a lot more power as we see when she's angry and, you know. So, as when she's, you know, focusing on bringing that out for just for the spell, Trigon, you know, sensing it, smiles and goes like, well, let me help her out just once. As then, all of a sudden, you know, Raven gets this sudden surge of power, you know, basically makes a little portal open she doesn't she feels when she opens her eyes suddenly a little power gets shot into her as then so she starts doing a chant and the por a portal's opening as Trigon is smiling. He goes, Yes Now we may begin my plan <laughs> Oh my daughter is going to hate me I love it. So, basically, what well, is this simple? Well, Naruto is looking around, trying to figure out if he needs to set up any traps and such. He can already tell, you know, some ninjas are already getting near him as Kurama is just smirking. He was like, any minute now. And so, right when Kakashi, Sasuke, Sakura, you know, Hanata, and Neji, and I want to say Eno are there. They have seen Naruto in a red X, like, you know, in the red X suit. As Sasuke goes like, who is this loser? Where Sakura was like, yeah! Why is he wearing such a stupid outfit? Which, I think Eno would go like, <laughs> uh, really? He looks stupid? I think he kind of looks, well, as Sakura goes like, really? You think he looks hot? He's like, what? <laughs> I mean, it does look good on him. Which... Naruto rolls his eyes underneath his, you know, the mask. And then basically with the voice modulator, he goes like, Well, thanks, Blondie, but... <laughs> sorry, you're not my type. Which, she goes like, uh, What do you mean? And Blondie? It was, yeah, someone who likes duck... Well, basically a guy who has basically a hair that looks like a duck butt. And who's an Avenger. But I did forget to mention that Chia Mascot did happen, so sorry. But yeah, it did happen and everything would go like in canon with Sasuke, so yeah. Anyways. He basically did Avenger because his clan's dead. Like, seriously. How can anyone girl just basically be so much of a fangirl over him? He doesn't even notice anyone, probably. Which Sasuke just glares at him. Which then Kakashi walks forward, he goes, Naruto, stop with the act. Which then Naruto, like, looks at Kakashi, takes off the mask, and you know, gets the black material off his hair. He was like, saw me when I left, huh? He goes, he just nods, he was like, wait, who are you anyways? He goes, my name is Hatate, wait, Kakashi Hadake. He was like, oh yeah, you're that guy that my well, brother talked about. It's, it's finally great to meet him. Oh, meet you, I mean. <laughs> Which... Basically, Sasuke, Sakura, Ino, Hanata are kind of shocked because I would say Naruto acted like the same way he would in canon, but now he's not, which is kind of shocking to them. It was a mask, quote-unquote, he was using around them, which Kakashi knows, because Jason told him, which he goes, likewise, why are you leaving? He goes like, oh, that village? Well, that village killed Jason, basically. And he told me to run. You think I'm gonna? You think I would not gonna listen to my brother? You have another thing coming, like Kakashi Hadake. That village is no good, and well, they call me a demon. <laughs> that place is more. De those people are way more demon-like than me. Which Kakashi just eyes widen in shock that he actually would say that, but then you know slowly go into a soft, you know, sorrow look, and then he goes, "Do you really think that lowly of Konoha?" He goes, no, not Konoha. I believe in the will of fire that the first and second Hokage wanted. I just don't believe in the people. What's the point of becoming Hokage to people that will want me dead? Or rather slit my throat and watch me bleed to death then? Will ever respect me from what I can do? I realize that, I realize that a lot, well, today actually. It kind of makes sense on my way to this area. That they would rather have me dead than live and become a ninja. So. I mean I kind of put everything together. Someone on the council probably wanted me dead. They hired some people to kill me. 
some Konoha ninjas plus a well Cubby Hugas were brought in and my bro killed them. But anyways, it's not like you can stop me. As in order to basically you know put on the black material that would go over his head and the mask as he's getting into a fine stance, as Kakashi just sighs and be like, I'm sorry about this, Naruto, but you're gonna be coming back. As Sasuke just smirks, be like, this will be easy to take it down the dope. I can basically defeat him by myself. Watch while me, the Chiha elite, defeat him. As Naruto just says, Bring on, Uchiha. I'll basically rip out both of your eyes before you can even, well, hit me. Which Sasuke just glares at him for that. And Naruto smirking underneath his mask. And then, so, all of a sudden, you know, back in Teen Titans World, while this was happening, you know, Raven does the chant, and then you know, she finally finishes it as a red portal's opening. And so, we go back to Naruto's world, or dimension, as a red portal's opening for Naruto, right behind him, I dare shocked by this. Everyone, Kakashi pulls up the Sharingan, immediately tries to see, you know, what it is. He does not see no chakra, nor does Neji see no chakra in, you know, the portal, as they both go like, what? Even well, Hanata, as all of a sudden, Naruto goes like, what are you guys staring at? Something behind me? As he looks, and there's a portal, he goes like, uh, I did not do, as the portal is sucking him, well, basically, as some invisible force is pulling Naruto into the portal, as he goes like, I'm, I'm not the one who summoned it, as he just gets, you know, pulled in, this, and he, you know, when he gets pulled in, the portal closes immediately before anyone could do anything. As Kakashi pulls down the shrine on, he goes like, he, he escaped. But the report just back to the Okage, as you know, they leave. Now, while Naruto's going through the portal, all of a sudden, time stops, isn't it? As something or someone appears. Someone big. Well, suddenly, more like a portal appears right in front of him, where the image of someone there. As he's smiling at Naruto, he goes like, what? Who are you? He goes, <laughs> Boy, my name is Trigon. It's a pleasure to finally meet you face to face. Which, Naruto's eyes one goes like, Wait, you're Trigon? You're a, you're a, a demon, you could say. Yes. But, I'm only here to give you a few things. As a courtesy for my old rival and friend, Karama. In which Naruto's eyes widen as he can hear Kurama just slapping away. Which he goes like, which he does say to his head, Kurama, you know this guy? He goes like, yeah, he's an old friend of mine, an old fighting buddy. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've ever seen him. He ain't good, Naruto. He's evil, pure, utter evil. He only does stuff like this when he's bored. Which Naruto's eyes widen underneath the mask. Which he goes like, why would you help me? And, wait, Jason said, you, you're the one who sent him into my dimension. He goes, yeah, I thought he would be a good teacher for you. He did an excellent job, and he showed you the real world, how it works. Only look out for number one, doesn't he say that? Which Naruto does not. And he goes, but why didn't you? Which trying on a side, but like, look, I can't help him. I'm not a good boy. I'm a I'm an evil tyrant. I conquer dimensions for the fun of it. Don't ask me why I didn't help. Besides, he's probably well happy to be. How should I say this? Be at peace. Which Naruto sat underneath his mask, but he goes, but I can do a few things. So, let's just say this, while Kakashi and everyone was looking for, like, going after Naruto, Hosen did find out from the dead bodies by Eno's father, who basically hired them, and what, what, what Jason Todd, you know, did. So, basically, they find out about Jason's experience in life, and was shocked by this. And, well, as soon as they basically leave the medical room, a portal arm opens underneath Jason, and yeah, Trigon opens up a portal right in front, like right, in, and you know, next to him is basically Jason's body. Comes through it, which Naruto's eyes widen, 
as all of a sudden I love basically Vite, I mean Holder appears as Jason's body gets cremated instantly and you know the ashes go into this little um, jar vase. Um, Some just hold his ashes for Naruto then to you know do whatever he wants with it later. So after basically Naruto's eyes you know seeing that and all of a sudden Trigon you know makes it disappear he says that will be whatever place you land in. Now let me give you a few things. First off, as all of a sudden Naruto's basically suit starts to glow as magical runes appear on it, he goes, Now, your suit, I enhanced it with magic. It can take more than, well, what normal, well, well it can take more than what that suit could have handled originally. It's very durable. It's easily adaptable into anything if you want to have any upgrades to it. Secondly, as all of a sudden a necklace appears around Naruto's neck, it was that necklace will allow you to absorb magic and allow you to use magic. Which Naruto's eyes widen, he was like, Wait, magic? He was, Yes, it is this? It's like chakra. Now, side note your suit is allowed, will, be, so will, will be able to use magic that you absorb. You have to learn to control your magic. After you absorb anyone's magic. Or in the vicinity. That necklace also works as a tracker. For certain things I'm about to scatter for you into the world. Where you're going. More like into the city. Now. What will happen is simple. You have to learn magic. From the books that will be sent out. Along with the other items. You have to maybe do some little trials as such. Most of it you'll just be able to take and leave or stay. Hey, I'll even help you. Well, or should I say, I even will basically have one of the things I'll help you in is a new place to stay. <laughs> Besides, I owe some favors to the fox. So. I'm just cashing a few. Which Kurama is chuckling. And so. Trigon then adds in. And he goes. But. That suit. Though. Legit. I'm not lying kid. And by the way. Yes. I use that word. Because. I've watched you. And Jason. For time to time. About his speaking of. His. Dimension. And how he speaks. Which. Naruto does not solely. He was like. It's a separate source. The magic. You would not be able to use your chakra. At the same time. Remember that. So you have two different sources of power. The magic may be more powerful. Be careful. Which he does not. He was. Now. As we see. A lot of things start to. You know, glow in Trigon's hand. And it's only they just scattered through the portals. He goes, Good luck, Naruto Uzumaki. And to Kurama. Our favors are even. As basically... Yeah. Naruto's time restarts. For him, he basically gets sent through the portal. As when he basically appears, he lands on his feet. As he looks up, he sees the T-Titans. He goes... And basically, Jason told him some lines for him to say when he sees them. He goes, you know, what's up, kids? It's been a while. Which, they're like, Red X. You know, basically, here's Robin says, as Raven's tired, he goes, Hey, uh, Raven girl, you might want to sit out. You're pretty, you look pretty tired. Like, seriously, it looks like you're about to pass out. I'm all with... Pl pl uh, playing around with all your kids. But still, I'm not going to beat down on someone so tired. Which, basically Robin looks at Raven. He can tell she, you know, Red X is right. He tells Raven to basically sit this one out. But she's like, but Robin. She, which, he says, that's an order. Which she does nod. And she goes over and falls down and sits. And he goes, well, it's just, it's just well, 
you four versus me. Bring it. And so the magical, it, well, the magical, I mean, the residual energy and magic that Raven sends is somehow going to Red X, as the basically the necklace is actually under, like underneath the suit. It's around Naruto's neck, actually. So it's legit, basically, as being absorbed. Naruto can tell by this new feeling of power, so he basically runs at me. Well, so, well, Beast Boy, who basically turned into a bull, and he jumps over him, immediately shooting a, well, a basically an X that will stick to the floor like glue. Which basically, yeah, as soon as basically it hits Beast Boy, he's shot because he's stuck there. As when he lands, he goes, Sorry, just had to stick around and watch. Which then all of a sudden, you know, so, I mean, not Sasuke, but Naruto feels something, you know, danger, something about to him. He just jumps up, dodging one of Cyborg's blasts, I mean, Sonic blasts, and then he basically throws a Red X Shuriken, you know, going towards, like, basically Robin, I mean, not Robin, Cyborg, as he dodges it, and when he lands, he hears Cyborg, like, hey, isn't me a Red X has a new look? In which, it, like I said, it looks like the picture. He was like, oh, you noticed, Cyborg. <laughs> yeah, when, wherever I was, I decided to change it up a little. Even add some new features. Like so. As all of a sudden, he basically has his hand to his side in a claw shape as the red energy goes over his hand. Yes, this actually is red energy. See, the finger, I mean, the metal part around the fingers and with the X-shaped metal plate... I think I decided to basically why not you know have that like basically just turn to energy where you know it become anything so in a sense he got kind of like a sword at his side with the gloves uh, sorry just 15 you know 15 percent battery it's nothing important so yeah but anyways with the gloves I mean not with gloves basically into claws red energy so yeah which Cyber was like okay now that is new which Robin just you know scowls he goes yeah. How you able to do that, Red X? He goes, well, you like to know bird brain. So, all we're going to do is we'll talk or we're going to dance. And so, you know, in his right hand, he makes exactly the same thing. In which, yeah, the fight is Robin throws some bird reins. Naruto basically cuts them. He basically dodges Starfire star bolts. He even cuts right through one, which shocks her. And he basically jumps up to deactivate the red energy. And, well, how should I say this? He doesn't, you know, punch her. He jumps up, grab, you know, she you know, dodges, but he grabs her by the shoulder and then grabs onto her arm and then throws her into a wall, even shooting a red X, you know, glue at her. I'm just going to say that. I'm just going to, you know, give different names for the X ones. So basically, it's red X, you know, glue. You know, stick. Or, you know, glue because it'll make her stick to the wall. As she's like, you know, trying to get out of it. And then he goes, sorry about that red, but <laughs> I really don't like to hit girls. Besides, even the cute ones I don't want to fight, especially. Which then Robin, you know, throws a kick in which he dodged and then kicks Robin in the back of the head so him flying. Starfire, just hear him saying that, basically glares at him and goes, are you really calling me that like you did last time? And he goes, what? Just saying what I'm saying. You are cute. Especially my type. And she goes, and she gets mad. He goes like, you, you, I, I would say, you know, I would say she would call him fiend. Something in Tamaranian. And they basically, as an insult, and basically, you know, shoots a laser at him. He basically, he dodges it. And then basically all of a sudden when basically Cyborg is about to punch him, Naruto basically teleports, which basically he was like, what the? As all of a sudden, he basically feels something on his back as it shocks him. It's the shock X. And he goes, <laughs> shocking, isn't it? Anyways, kids, I'd love to stick around. But, hey, it's been fun. He jumps up in the air, you know, Basically up to the glass and disappears before hitting it. Which Robin punches the ground and goes like, He got away again! So, yeah. Anyways. 
Raven was kind of shocked because Red X seems different. You know, she doesn't understand why. But even Starfire kind of can tell that a little bit. But yeah, meanwhile with Nord, well, Cyborg's, you know, just shocked, you know, on the ground. You know, like, thinking what, sh- what was with, with what was with Red X, so. Basically, we go back to, we go to Naruto, who's just running on the rooftops, seeing Jump City. He goes to himself, different city, different place. Huh. I wonder if Trigon City is right. But this, like, little necklace start to, as all of a sudden, he sees something pointing to, you know, in a direction. He sees this red line, you know, guiding him. And he goes, okay, let's see what this is. So... One Naruto is running, it does take him about an hour, and he basically lands in front of a building. This building has two doors in front of it, basically for garage doors. It was weird. Alright. So, he's basically looking on for an entryway, which the line is still showing him where, it, you know, where to go as he finds an entryway because of it. And so, what happens is simple. When he gets in, he looks around. It's basically an old repair shop. As he goes, wow. Thanks, Trion. This place looks great. <sighs> great home. As he still sees the line up in the air as he's following it. As and when he gets to an area, it just shows a switch. It just, you know, is huh? Why is it pointing to the switch? As when he basically flicks open the sw- uh, flicks the switch, he hears something as. Something's open it up. As the red line's gone, so he was like, uh, okay. So he basically walks down the stairwell as soon as the he's walking down there, it basically, you know, this whole entire thing's closing. It was uh weird when he looks back. You know, it's just normal wall as lights are on. So he's just walking down there, down the stairwell, and when he finds this is a secret base underneath this repair shop. He goes, Huh? What the? I mean, this place is pretty spacious. But still. Uh. Weird. Who would have made this? Hmm. I have to think about that later. Right now, though, I need to go through some stuff. If, I, if this was leading me to some. I mean, two here, then this is my place. <sighs> well, like I said, thanks, Trigon. For helping. Which Karama says. Like I said kid. He's evil. He only did this for a purpose. And what I know is. It's probably to help him conquer this place. Or for added entertainment. Whatever it is. <laughs> Let's enjoy our time here. We're not going to be near Konoha. And they can't come get us. We're free from them. Which Naruto is smiling. He goes. Yeah. I still anything I could from that village. Food, jutsus, heck, even basically when the, well, scr- basically sacred ceiling, I mean, from the scroll of ceiling, a jutsu that I used to pass with. <laughs> Idiots. <sighs> Let's see where the bed is and then take a nap. I'm tired. Which Kron goes, yeah, get some rest, kid. So when Arta finds a place to sleep, he immediately, you know, takes off the red X suit, gets in some clothing, and sleeps. Alright, everyone. I hope you guys like this. This video will not be worked on for a while. Maybe I'll add it in just for a variety. Like, during the, when the weeks... I mean, yeah, during one of the week or weekends. If this video gets a couple... Let's say 50 likes. I will make a part 2 to it. Alright. Bye everyone. Have a nice day, night, wherever you are, and bye.